Hello and welcome inside the ACU TV or studio for this week's Optimist Newscast. I'm Cindy Varner alongside Connor Mullins. ACU celebrated the return of alumni in a normal homecoming this past weekend after a year due to COVID-19. Many traditions, including the parade and tailgate, returned to campus. Allie Jones has more. The ACU campus always seems a little smaller during homecoming weekend with students and alumni packing into campus to enjoy different activities. This year, the homecoming board made sure to focus on the return of many beloved homecoming traditions. We wanted uh, to create and, and reignite some of the old traditions that we do because people missed out on those last year. Things like the parade, the carnival, uh, those, those opportunities are, are big and, and meaningful and Lots of great time for people to be together. The majority of activities were held outside to cut down on COVID concerns. This level of forethought from the homecoming board was also shown throughout the week as organizations across campus continued to contribute to the celebration. We want the whole ACU community to be involved and so back in May we started requesting um, event submissions from departments and organizations so that we could kind of help them think through processes and the best way to engage them. Students were encouraged to go to every event they could not just to make some college memories, but also to form connections to the traditions and the people. According to Fisher, alumni love interacting with students at these events because it allows them to relive some of their best college memories. Our, our alums love to see our students, love to uh, kind of live life through them again and kind of see what it's like to be a student here. The campus might have been crowded, but the connections formed over the weekend between alumni and students might help open up their world a little bit more. For The Optimist, I'm Allie Jones reporting. ACUPD has responded to over 14 car burglaries from the middle of September until a week and a half ago. All of the cars involved were unlocked when the burglaries occurred. After reviewing several of the 1,700 cameras on ACU's campus, ACUPD found the same suspect was involved in all of them. Lieutenant Wright with ACUPD said the subject has previously been involved in crime on both ACU's campus and in Abilene, and the suspect has been arrested. During the investigation, we found a male subject uh, in multiple videos. Uh, we were very confident that it was going to be our su a suspect in all of them. Um, once one of our investigators reviewed that video and got a good facial, he immediately recognized him as a suspect that we've had dealt with in the past. Um, we sent that information to APD. Uh, APD, Abilene PD also uh, was looking at him for a crime as well. Um, in just about a week ago, that subject was arrested for a parole warrant and also for an Abilene PD case, which involved a residential burglary. Lieutenant Wright said locking your car doors and hiding your valuables can help prevent your car from being broken into. Up next, Wildcat Sports had a busy weekend, including a bounce back win for football at the annual homecoming game. Here's Connor Mullins for more. Connor? Thanks, Sydney. Soccer went up against the Chicago State Cougars for the second time this season, falling to the Cougars 1-0. Coming into this game, ACU had not won since its last matchup against the Cougars back on October 2nd. The Cougars scored in the first half and held the Wildcats scoreless for the entire game. While ACU had triple the amount of shots compared to Chicago, they only had four on goal compared to Chicago's five. This loss gave ACU its third consecutive loss, and the Wildcats will be back home for their next game against Sam Houston on Friday, October 22nd at 7 p.m. and will be broadcast live on ESPN+. ACU softball faced off against Angela State on Sunday at Wells Poly Stadium. The Rams took the lead with a home run early on in the first inning and were able to score again with an RBI double in the top of the third. The Wildcats scored in the bottom of the sixth with an RBI double by sophomore catcher and third baseman Avery Millick. The Rams scored again in the top of the seventh and managed to stay on top, beating ACU 3-1. This game wrapped the Wildcats' final false preseason play and the team will continue practicing for their spring season. Along with the homecoming festivities this past weekend, ACU football squared off against the Lamar Cardinals for the second time this season. The optimist Kerry Johnston has more on that story. Hey, let's go! The Wildcats finally earned their first WAC ASIN Challenge win in a 24-17 victory against the Lamar Cardinals. ACU struck first when backup quarterback Peyton Mansell ran the ball for 31 yards and a touchdown. 
Lamar didn't score until the beginning of the second quarter, but then ACU redshirt freshman quarterback Stone Earl ran the ball for another touchdown on the next drive, making the score 14-7. A short time later, Earl was carted out of Wildcat Stadium due to a lower leg injury, with the severity of the injury remaining undisclosed at this point in time. So Manziel took control of the offense for the rest of the game, running a total of 122 yards and two touchdowns. And according to Manziel, though he has been playing backup most of the season, he was ready to fully lead the offense. Obviously, it's a lot easier going in if you, when you played a couple snaps early in the game rather than just coming off the bench cold. Um, but, you know, just always being ready to go is kind of my mindset, regardless of if it's in practice or in a game. But the Wildcats' most significant play came in the third quarter, when Lamar had a fourth and one in the red zone. The Cardinals rushed the ball up the middle, but ACU was able to hold its opponent's offense back, causing a turnover on downs. And, according to head coach Adam Dorrell, this was a crucial play for the team's win. I just thought it gave our defense a lot of confidence. They were on their heels uh, when they came out and Lamar was driving down the field. So I just I thought it gave them a lot of confidence to go out and finish the game and, and to be able to do that. Honestly, we haven't had a lot of third and short, fourth and short stops this year. Um, you know, the conversion on us has been pretty high. Now, ACU enters its first bye week of the season, with its next game being against Stephen F. Austin. With this much needed by coming, the game plan for Doral and his team is to rest. Man, the big thing is we're going to be really light this week, um, giving the guys a lot of time off for, for academics and then chance to go home later in the week. And um, I've always found if you can do that, the bye guys come back really refreshed. And that's what we got to do. We've got four games left, and we'll you know we'll be the underdog in all four of those games. So. Uh, we've got a lot of football left to play. The Wildcats and Lumberjacks will kick off in Nacogdoches on Saturday, October 30th at 4 p.m. on ESPN+. For The Optimist, this is Carrie Johnston reporting. Let's go! That's all for sports. I'm Connor Mullins. And I'm Sydney Varner. Thank you for tuning in to this week's Optimist Newscast. We'll see you next time.